Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, I'm just gonna talk about something interesting that I found on the internet today. Uh, I happened to stumble upon it, and it's basically a chart on the Toro's Greensmaster, the number of reels, number of blades on the reels, and what the high to prefer how to cut this should be. So you look on this chart, an eight blade reel, it has a 11 blade reel and a 14 blade reel. And for my case, I have the 11 blade reel, um, it's saying that it needs to be anywhere between one and a half millimeters to I think nine and a half millimeters. Uh, that equates to about 0.37 inches, which is basically close to three eighths of an inch height of cut. Um, that's basically the height of cut I was going at when I was doing the scalping um, prior to the aeration and top dressing with sand. And I do have to say that it looked really, really good on my lawn, but it's just uh, too much work. I mean, if you're cutting at that high to cut, even with PGR, you're gonna be cutting like every 36 hours. So essentially you're gonna be cutting every day, which is basically too much for basically a regular homeowner to handle. Now, if you were a golf course or on the commercial side, I believe that that shouldn't be a problem because that's gonna be your daily routine. But, you know, maybe down the road sometime, I'm gonna go, go down to that high to cut. Um, three eighths is probably as low as I'll go. I don't think I'll go any lower than that. But anyways, today I just want to talk about uh, the lawn. Uh, basically, it's time to lay down my granulars for the upcoming month of August. And this time I'm going with Essential G instead of Carbon Pro G because I ended up getting a discount for it. So I ended up getting two bags, but I'm only going to use one bag per month. And the thing, that, the thing that's a little bit different about Essential G is that it actually has less uh, compost and biochar than Carbon Pro G does. So that's why they recommend to actually up the number of bags you use per square footage. Uh, in my case, I think it's a little bit too expensive to be doing that. Um, I don't think I can afford to pay double the amount, plus the bag costing double the amount of Carbon Pro G and having to put down more. So in my case, I'm just gonna put down just one bag um, for it. Now, if I look at the bag here, which I have with me, let's see here. So it basically says that it has yeah, so it has about 10% of biochar versus the, uh, I believe, 50% of biochar that you get with Carbon Pro G. Um, but with Essential G, you actually get a lot of different things. Like you, there's a poultry compost, swine compost, there's a 5% humate, 35% uh, reclaimed coffee grounds, and 5% silicone. So you're putting different materials into your soil to make it uh, a lot more healthy. But of course, you get a lot less biochar, which uh, it kind of makes sense. Uh, it's a more expensive product, given that you're putting a lot of different things in there. And that's why they recommend you putting a, more than what you would do for Carbon Pro G. And then, uh, after, so basically I'm gonna do a mow today. And then I'm gonna put down my 14714, which is what I've been doing every month. So I'm gonna lay that down. I'll be laying Essential G first, laying that down. Then I will spray my Turfplex and Nutrisolve right here six ounces per thousand each and then also PGR so PGR uh, last time uh, if you guys watched the previous video where I was doing the seven day challenge uh, at the end of the week on Sunday I had applied the uh, PGR at 0.25 ounces which I did during midday and it was around 11 o'clock and then later that day uh, it got up to about 100 degrees and Literally, it didn't take that much time. By the, by the next day, the lawn was turning brown. It basically got burnt. So it looked like fertilizer burn. So my recommendation is not to apply uh, PGR in those hot temps. Like put it, like today, right now, we're, at, we're, we're approaching about 6 p.m. Uh, after I mow and everything, the sun should be setting. And then I'll be applying, obviously I'll apply the granulars first, and then I will be applying uh, my sprays that'll be applied on the lawn when everything's all cooled down and then it goes overnight right to get dry So it's slowly drying on the grass rather than it drying very very quickly in hot degree temperatures So give it time to dry and then tomorrow I'm going to water it in with RGS humic 12 and then uh, Hydrotain and also my simple lawn solution starker green and that should be it I mean, uh, I'll be I'll be set for the month of August there and then uh, I think for my PGR, I may attempt to go 0.375 this time. Um, I just have high hopes that I won't burn the lawn this time, given I'm going to do it tonight. So I kind of want to experiment. I want to see if I'm going to get the bronzing that I was getting before 
um, given I'm gonna do it in, in, in the evening. So I'm gonna try to do 0.375 ounces tonight and see how it goes. And then I'm gonna wake up early tomorrow and water that all in um, with the, you know, the RGX Humid 12 and the Hydrotain and Simple Long Solutions Darker Green. Now let, let, me, let me remind you, uh, Turfplex and Nutrizol need to be dried on the leaf blades. Same thing with PGR, they do need to be dried on the leaf blades, but make sure that they dry slowly on the leaf blades. So you either do it in the very, very early morning, right? And then let that dry slowly until it gets to midday, or do it in the evening and then let that dry during the nighttime and then water in your granulars, uh, you know, next morning. That's basically how Ron Henry does it. He put, he applies uh, his granulars in the evening, and he also sprays on the same day. But he does it, it, he does it in the evening, and then he waters it in with his irrigation, pretty much the next day. So I'm thinking of doing the same thing, um, only that I'm hand watering with RGS Humid 12 and then the, the two other, two other products that I mentioned. Um, I feel like that's probably a good technique going forward, given that. We still have August to come, and August is going to be fairly hot. I mean, I remember last year we were at 100 degrees or so still, and it, was, it wasn't until mid-September that we actually started dropping into mid-90s, low 90s, and then 80s. So uh, we still got quite a ways. Yeah, we still have high degree temperatures to be dealing with. But uh, luckily this, this week, this past week, we've gotten uh, some rain, and it's kind of cooled down a bit. Uh, we've we had temperatures in low 90s and some in the mid 80s and then in the evenings we were down to like 73 so it's helped uh, the grass not get so uh, dried and burnt up like it usually does in the hot summers so but anyways uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get on with the mow um, update on my reel sharpening I'm still looking around I've been calling some local places to see if they have any availability to sharpen up my reel uh, some of them are booked until August so I'm still calling around to find out um, which which person or which place can get it done in a quicker amount of time. Um, if I can find a place I can do it on the same day and they allow me to film, I'm gonna go try to film uh, a sharpening video for you guys so that you guys can see how it's done. But anyways, yeah, let's get on with the mow. FYI, I did spray this section with certainty. Uh, I don't know what happened with the Smiths. It just, it didn't permanently stop the sedges for the remaining of the season that's what I was expecting to happen but uh, they're back so I had to spray the area with uh, certainty and I had laid this down on Tuesday and I, I mowed all the other spots but I just did mow this section here because I wanted it to absorb into the leaf blades and then go all the way down to the roots but uh, I will mow this today and we should be cleaned up I did spray certainty over here and I do not see sedges coming back. The sedges are there, but they are not growing anymore. So let me see if I can get a shot on a few of them. All right, right there. Slowly dying. They are yellowing up. So it's only a matter of time for them to come back because every time it rains, they, they end up coming back. But at least the section should be clear of the sedges for a while. I'm not to experiment with this mess. I, I really don't know. I figured spraying it here would have uh, destroyed all the sedges and then at least stop future sedges from coming up for some time, but that was not the case. Um, maybe it's because I did it with a frozen sprayer rather than using a backpack sprayer with a flood jet tip.
All right, so next morning, it's time to go ahead and water in all the granulars from last night. So I've got a RGS Humic 12. These are gonna be put into the spray bottle at six ounces per thousand. And then I've got Hydrotain doing a maintenance rate of three ounces per thousand. And then I've got the, basically my liquid iron that I'll be applying at the end. And that's gonna be at 10 ounces per thousand. So let's get it going and then we'll be done with everything. with the entire uh, watering in. So I got Humic 12 RGS, and then I mixed Hydro Chain with the Simple Long Solutions Darker Green, and then went over it twice and watered everything in. So I think we're good. Uh, we had an overcast pretty much the whole morning, so sun's just now starting to come out. We're approaching 10 o'clock. So hopefully uh, the lawn won't get burnt this time from the PGR. So we'll just wait and see, and then we'll check back in a few days color is looking great already but uh, I'm sure it's gonna look better in a few more days all right guys Alright, it's been about two days now since we laid the application. 
take a look at the lawn. Not much has grown. Looks like PGR is doing its thing. So I imagine I'm gonna be taking just minimal amount of grass today. But I am gonna go ahead and mow. Uh, I'm not gonna video the mow. I'm just gonna fast forward and mow real quick and then I'll video how the lawn looks afterwards. All right, catch you guys in just a minute. All right, I'm done. A little bit too dark to see everything, but you can still see the stripes in the dark. Can't really tell by the color right now, but the color is looking good. So, just wanted to show you guys the new Miramichi Green Essential G was laid down, plus 14714, and then the rest of the biosimilants and the liquids. And that's pretty much it. Uh, stay tuned, guys. Alrighty, it's the next day. Look at that color. Looking good. Looking mighty good. It's roughly around 94 degrees right now. Temperatures are going to climb up to the hundreds on Friday and Saturday. So we're going to be getting some hot temperatures, some really, really hot temperatures. Yeah, this color is looking good, guys. I will say, I think I accomplished my goal for the season. I don't know if you guys remember, last year I said that I did want to get a more even color distribution and darker green. I think I have achieved it. I think so. Alright guys, that's it. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And then I'll be making more content in the future coming your way. Anyway, peace out guys, happy mowing. And I'll see you guys in the next video.